Next, we welcome to the stage musician, author, and activist Simon Tam to speak from personal experience about artistic expression and the First Amendment. Mr. Tam is founder of The Slants, the world's first and only Asian American dance rock band. He recently won a landmark Supreme Court case expanding freedom of speech and has received numerous awards, including the Hugh M. Hefner First Amendment Award. So please welcome to the stage Simon Tam. So thank you so much for, for being here. It's such an honor to be a part of this event and to, to be able to share some of our own story. I mean, for me, as I was thinking about this event, even on the plane here, I was thinking, like, what can I actually say? What can I say that hasn't been covered today or won't be covered tomorrow by such an incredible group of speakers and, and experts? And I thought, more than anything else, I'm here to share my story. And so, what I oftentimes like to do is, before I dive into the details of what it was like to be um, a client, a part of a major Supreme Court case on free speech, is I like to talk about who we are, like why do we do what we, what we do? And so for me, that story oftentimes began not in a court of law, but in a different area of law, and that's at a federal prison. So in 2011, our band was invited to perform at the Oregon State Penitentiary. Now, as a Johnny Cash fan, I was really excited about this. <laughs> I even was planning on wearing all black that day. I thought this is going to be our Folsom Prison Blues moment. Well, the idea of sending an all Asian American band into a prison with one of the highest populations of neo Nazis in the country, what, it didn't cross my mind that this could be a little bit precarious. I didn't even think about it as I was signing the waiver form saying we wouldn't sue if we were injured, maimed, or killed in the prison. In fact, I didn't really think about it until we were going through our second set of metal detectors. And it was at that point we were given these bright orange vests, the kind you get, were given in high school when you play flag football, these giant numbers on them. And that's when one of my band members asked our liaison, he says, hey, we wear suits and vests when we're playing. It's July. It's really hot out. Is it okay if we remove these safety vests when we're performing? Well, the guard looks at us and he says, sure. But if something happens out there, those vests let us know who not to shoot. Uh, I'm like, yo, yo, can I get two of them vests? <laughs> I don't want to lose mine. And so I start getting filled with anxiety as we walk our way through the prison because I start thinking, like, what do I know about prisons or prisoners? In fact, I didn't really know anything. Like, the only stuff I knew came from pop culture, books, movies, and television shows. And this was years before Orange is the New Black was out, so I didn't even think of prisons as a, you know, industrial complex that reinforced white supremacy. I just thought, they're going to send, like, the worst of the worst here. You know, drug dealers, rapists, and murderers. Finally, we get out to this area called the Big Yard. It was the size of a couple football fields in length surrounded by 30-foot high walls. And around the walls, you could see sentry towers where they had searchlights and mounts for weapons. At the end of this big yard was a small concrete stage, about the same size as this one here today. And the only thing separating us from nearly 2,000 inmates were these bright orange safety cones and a thin line of yellow police tape that said, police, do not cross. And I was like, I don't know if they follow these kinds of instructions. I mean, that's why they're here, right? They, they can't follow instructions. <laughs> but finally, we take the stage and we begin to play. And for us, this is the most important part of the day. Because anytime we have a chance to share our art, I think it expresses, I think it communicates things, but sometimes we can't by words alone. And so our little 45-minute set gets turned into almost two hours and then as we launch into our cover of the Rolling Stones Paint It Black, I watch as a sea of orange jumpsuits start jumping up and down along to our music. I see a red tour at night, once it paints it black. 
no colors anymore I want them to turn black I see the girls walk by dressed in their summer clothes I have to turn my head and till my darkness goes And as soon as we step off the stage our brand is actually breaking down equipment. I'm walking by and hanging out by one of these safety cones on the safe side, of course. And as I'm there, a group of large shirtless white men start walking up towards me. And I don't wear my glasses when I perform, so I can't really see what's going on. I just know that they're, they're covered in tattoos, head to toe. As they get closer, it becomes abundantly clear to me what it says. The man in front, has two words, white power. I look for my band and they're breaking down equipment 20 feet away from me. I look for the guard who was supposed to be helping us out and he's 50 feet away, breaking up a different fight. I turn back around and the man is just an arm's length away from me. He looks a little bit anxious as he hands me a sharpened pencil and a piece of paper. He then begins to ask me for an autograph. <laughs> At that moment, I can, if I'm to be honest with you, the only thing going through my head is that scene in Jurassic Park where they're like, if you don't move, the T-Rex won't see you. <laughs> I, I thought maybe it'll work in this moment. It didn't. But then he says a few words that just cuts right through me. It's for my daughter. Will you please sign it? Of course. Of course I'll sign it. And as, as I begin signing this thing and addressing to his daughter, I avoid questions like, so why are you in here? Because that seems obvious. Can't follow instructions. And ask questions about who he was and about his family, what, what grade she's in. At the end, I hand the piece of paper back to him. And he says, you know, you guys being here and you taking the time to actually talk with me, it means so much. Like, I can't change what's stained into my skin, but I could change what's in my head, and I could change what's in my heart. You know, we both walked in with all kinds of assumptions, but once we had a, actually had a chance to talk and exchange ideas, we both left change that day. I started the slants because I wanted to change people's assumptions about Asian Americans. Because growing up, the only things that people knew about Asians, well, they came from pop culture. Books, TV, and movies were not kind to us. I grew up with teachers and other students quoting characters like Long Duck Dong and thinking it was funny and appropriate. Like overhearing school teachers say things like me so horny or quoting full other kind of a just atrocious lines from Full Metal Jacket as I walked in the hallways as an elementary school kid. And so I wanted to take a moment to seize our identity, choose who we are. And that's why I started a band. I decided to call it The Slants because I wanted to share our perspective of what it's like to be Asian American in this country. And meanwhile, we were reappropriating this outdated racial slur and and, and filling it with self-empowerment. However, the government disagreed with this uh, <laughs> kind of idea. When we applied to register our band's trademark, the United States Patent and Trade uh, Trademark Office rejected it. And the only evidence they used to justify their position were UrbanDictionary.com and photos of Miley Cyrus pulling her eyes back in a slant eye gesture. When we appealed using thousands and thousands of voices of Asian Americans, including incarceration camp survivors, executive directors of numerous social justice organizations, dictionary experts like editors at the New American Oxford Dictionary and two major independent national surveys, essentially more evidence in a, an appeal for a trademark rejection than anyone provided in US history, the government said it was not good enough because they found something on AsianJokes.com that said otherwise. How degrading is it to try and fight for your own identity and say your community's opinion doesn't matter because the government knew better than us? I spent almost eight years fighting for this case. 
about a fifth of my life at that time, trying to fight for the ability to just choose and protect our own identity. And I was thrilled last summer when we got handed down this decision. It was a unanimous ruling at the US Supreme Court. And legal experts say it might actually be the last unanimous ruling on free speech in <laughs> for some time to come. But there's a particular moment that I wanted to share with you before a band jumps back on stage and shares a, a bit of our music with you. And this was after oral arguments was being, were being heard. I was walking down the steps of the Supreme Court and I noticed that the courtyard is filled with thousands of people. And at that point I'm like, what are they doing here? Because court's in session, there's no tours today. But halfway down, as we're walking down the steps, the crowd erupts in applause. Many of them had been waiting since midnight the night before trying to get into oral arguments. Clearly, a concern about free speech was on their minds. Clearly, the idea of choosing your own identity mattered to them as well. And as I hit the bottom step, these two kids run up to me. They're Asian Americans who are freshmen in high school. Their parents, miraculously, as Asian Americans, let them ditch school to be there. <laughs> they run up to me and they say, Simon, we grew up with our entire lives hearing about you and hearing about your band, hearing about the person who's willing to fight for our community, for the dignity of choosing what's best for ourselves. And they told me that they actually wanted to go into public policy development because of me. I'm like, you're a freshman in high school, you know what public policy development is? Like, <laughs> that is a, such an incredible thing. And I remember thinking at that moment, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter if we win or lose. We've already won in the hearts of the people that mattered the most to us. They're going to continue that conversation and continue taking it forward. I was kind of shuffled off to the side where there was this media circus of microphones and cameras, and I thought my attorneys had actually prepared some remarks for the day. They did not. <laughs> and they said, Simon, do you want to say something? And I said, absolutely, because I wanted to make the argument. I, I couldn't speak for myself in court, which is, I think, such a beautiful metaphor for what I was going through, that I didn't have the right to speak for myself. And so I said what no attorney or Supreme Court justice was willing to say. And I said, if the government truly cared about fighting racism while using trademark law to do so, why didn't they begin by canceling the registrations of the KKK or white supremacist groups? Why did they choose to wage that battle against an anti-racist band? It's because they don't actually care. They wanted to use bad language as a distraction from bad policy that was disproportionately affecting marginalized communities. The, they didn't like the, the fact that our case shone a spotlight on them. We found out that the law they're using, this obscure 70-year-old law that was written during the Jim Crow era, was primarily being used against members of the LGBTQ community and communities of color because those tend to be the groups that reappropriate language, which actually makes them prime targets for the law. But any time someone from the majority or dominant group applied, they got the benefit of the doubt. That's why every single slur for an Asian American was a registered trademark, except when an Asian applied. They were swiftly rejected. Any slur that you could think of was a registered trademark until a member of that group stepped up. And so, yeah, it took eight years of my life, but I always like to remember this particular quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and it's one that I want to close with today. Dr. King loved to paraphrase this quote that said, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And I always just remind folks that that moral arc, it doesn't bend on its own. It requires patience, persistence, and people willing to fight for your rights. So thank you so much. And now, we're thrilled to welcome the rest of Mr. Tan's group, the Slants, including Ken Shima, Tyler Chen, Joe Young, and Yuya Matsuda for a musical performance. So please welcome me in 
please join me in welcoming this Lance. Hey guys, can I play the role of both Tyler Chin, Yuya, Masuda, and Joe? You be the drummer too? I want to be the two drummers that we don't have with us right now. Check one, two. One, two. Check one, two. All right. All right. Yeah. So this song is one that we just recently wrote for NPR's Radio Lab. We have a series called The More Perfect Podcast, which is about Supreme Court cases. Uh, this season, they actually wanted to do something like Schoolhouse Rock, and they invited artists from around the country to write songs about the Bill of Rights. They each assigned us an amendment. Guess one, which one we got assigned? Well, when I responded to them, I said, you know what? The First Amendment might be a little bit obvious to us. Can we tackle something else? And they gave us the privilege of doing two amendments, the 18th and the 21st Amendment, which are prohibition and what eventually got rid of it. And so this song is about turning 18 and 21 years old. It's a coming of age song about where your freedom actually is. Remember counting the days, remember grasping for moments Freedom was a digit away, remember thinking the world closed up on you like an eyelid Seeing through, peering through, remember when you were teenagers staring up at the ceiling Emotions like a runaway train, remember making the promise to yourself not to be cautious Flawless and wandering They are misjudged One breath You're on the cusp You were 18 Now you're 21 Drew their lines And they changed their minds You were 18 Now you're 21 Housed by rules Now you're free to run You were 18 Now you're 21 Drew their lines And they changed their minds You were 18 Now you're 21 Housed by rules, now you're free Remember when people told you that you can't be dreaming The present luxury fading like the air that you're breathing Remember when you were three, filling your lung without questions The first time that you fell in the sea And could you ever imagine if they bored up the ocean The cracks come immediately Lies, they are judge. One breath, you're on the cusp. You were 18, now you're 21. They drew their lines and they changed their minds. You were 18, now you're 21. Housed by rules, now you're free to run. You were 18, now you're 21. Drew their lines and they changed their minds. You were 18. Now you're 21, housed by rules, now you're free to run. The watchful lies, they arms judged. One day they'll see. You were 18, now you're 21 Drew their lines, they changed their minds You were 18, now you're 21 Housed by rules, now you're free to run You were 18, now you're 21 Drew their lines, and they changed their minds You were 18, now you're 21 Housed by rules, now you're free to run You were 18, now you're 21 
do their lines and they change their minds. You were 18, now you're 21. House by rules, now you're free to run. Free to run. Thank you. Thank you. Most of us don't care. Flashing lights, the distant cries Most just move right on Muffled sounds, averted eyes Hear the radio screech Stop, I can't breathe It's in blue lines, we'll divide all Black and white, stand in a fall Protect, withdraw, blendless eyes of the not too late to make the call Some lives don't matter at all What's the last straw Blameless eyes of the law Dark or light, or surface deep, what's underneath? Whose side will you take when both lie bleeding in the streets? See the steel salute, hands up, don't shoot. Thin blue lines will divide all, black and white standing or fall. Protect, withdraw, blame. It's not too late to make the call Some lives don't matter at all What's the last straw blameless eyes of the law? Riots are the language of the unheard Violence is the answer to your slander Ashes are the fertile grounds for rebirth And justice for thin blue lines will divide all Black and white stand in a fall Protect, withdraw, blameless size of the It's not too late to make the call Some lives don't matter at all What's the last straw, blameless size of the Thin blue lines will divide all Black and white stand in a fall To make the call Some lives don't matter at all What's the last straw Blame this eyes of the law Thank you You guys are amazing Thank you Thank you Sorry if my note's too sharp Sorry if our voice is too raw Don't make the pen a weapon and center our intelligence Until I thought you nothing at all Sorry if you take offense You made up rules and played pretend You know you fear change something so strange Where nothing's gonna get in our way There's no Backwards feelings and backyard dealings We're never gonna settle, never gonna settle And no, we won't remain silent, no Inside a funny moment we sing from 
from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. No, we won't be complacent. No, it's a rock and roll nation. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. When I point at you guys, just yell out no, okay? You guys are ready. Sorry if we try too hard to take some power back for ours. The language of oppression will lose to education until the words can't hurt us again. So sorry if we take offense. The silence will not make amends. And the system's all wrong and it won't be long before the kids are singing our song. There's no room for your backwards feelings and backyard feelings are never gonna settle, never gonna settle and no, oh, we won't remain silent, no, it's a defining moment, we sing from the heart, we sing from the heart, we sing from the heart, we sing from the no, oh, we won't be complacent, no, it's a rock and roll nation, we sing from the heart, we sing from the heart. No, but we won't remain silent. No, it's a defining moment. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the no. But we won't be complacent. No. It's a rock and roll nation. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. No. We won't be silent. It's a defining moment. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. We sing from the no. Nation. We sing from the heart. We sing from the heart. Thank you guys so much. So we got one more for you today. Thank you again for being a part of this event. Uh, please stay tuned for closing remarks, and then there's a reception afterwards. So we'll see you there. Yeah. And I just also wanted to mention that post Supreme Court, one of the other things that we decided to do was to start our own nonprofit organization. So now the Slants, we, we have something called the Slants Foundation, and we are providing scholarships and mentorship to future troublemakers. In other words, activists, artists of color. So thank you for being a part of this and supporting our work. Then a fall, crashing your way through my walls. I'll just watch you fly. Veils cannot hide what you are to me. We're one and the same. All of these feelings cannot be dreaming endlessly falling when you come calling. to be here under city lights we're right into the night we both know this is right so let's fight together until it breaks and you're off again there is no need to pretend it's just you and me Don't be scared to lose control The past is gone, so 
So far, descending in the night. Can you see them now? They can show us how. All of these feelings, can I be dreaming? And when you come calling, dancing real close, don't really know how I got to be here. Whoa, whoa under city lights. We'll ride into the night We both know this is a ride So let's ride together Ladies and gentlemen, the slants, Simon Tan, thank you very much, and the slants from the West Coast and Parts Unknown. Well, that's a tough act to follow, uh, a terrific end to the first day of the conference, and I also want to thank our incredible panelists and moderators, and thanks to each of you for spending the afternoon with us, and we brought in an on-time ending today. Before we close for today, I'd like to uh, extend a special word of thanks first to members of our Duquesne University team who have been instrumental in bringing this conference to life. And the first one, come on, Professor Erin Karsman, come on up here. She's been hiding, but Erin Karsman has done a lot of the work in bringing this together. So let's hear it. Take a bow, Erin. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to thank Ron Gelotti, Assistant Vice President, Conference and Events Services, Leah Morrison, Executive Director of Branding and Marketing Strategy, Kyle Payne, Associate Director of Technical Services for the conference. This was a complicated event. And, he, um, and also law school alum, Devin Ferris, who served as our Assistant Conference Coordinator, and Sam Nolan, a third year law student here at Duquesne and President of the Appellate Moot Court team who also assisted with the conference planning. As I mentioned at the opening, over the course of the past two years, I've worked closely with our partners at the Pittsburgh Foundation, our co-hosts for today's conference. So many, many thanks to Emmy Calland, Senior Manager for the Center for Philanthropy and Strategic Initiatives, Doug Root, Vice President for Communication, Kitty Julian, Senior, Senior Communications Officer, and also our thanks to Gene Perlman, who helped to conceive of this program from the earliest stages. My thanks as well to Andy Conti, Founding Director of the Center for Media Innovation at Point Park University, who's been instrumental in helping to plan this conference and will be moderating a panel tomorrow. We're also deeply indebted to Matt Grohl and the Allegheny Foundation, Bill Benter and the Benter Foundation, and the Knight Foundation for their generous support of this initiative. Our thanks to all of them. And now I hope you will join us in the Shepherson Suite next door for a reception and book signing. Floyd Abrams, Juan Williams, and Nadine Strawson uh, will be there with books on sale and they will sign those books. Have a great evening. Plan to join us tomorrow for a full day again at 9 o'clock a.m. Another terrific lineup in this national conference on the First Amendment. Thank you very much. <laughs> 